Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today, I want to show you how I've gone about creating an automated reverse loop for use here on the Piedmont Southern layout. You know, this, now this is something that I talked about recently when I did a review of these uh, DCC Concepts Cobalt IP Digital Switch Machines. And I said then that one of the projects I wanted to take on was creating an automated uh, DCC reverse loop. So over the last couple of days, I went ahead and put that together. And literally, what I'm going to show you took me two days uh, to do. It took me one day to cut out the plywood, to lay the foam subroad bed and the track here on the layout. And then it took me another day to do all the wiring. So that's all that it really takes. It's, it's not a overwhelming project, but it's something that you can do, you know, very quickly uh, once you get it all laid out in front of you. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. Okay, before we get started with the actual look at how this uh, automated reverse loop works, I want to uh, go through a couple of diagrams with you and show you some of the issues involved with reverse loops and how you can go about solving them. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So basically, if you're using a power routing turnout, you're going to get a potential mismatch in polarity because this red wire connects, or this red rail, uh, will connect to the black rail here somewhere in the loop because the way it uh, physically wraps around. So you're going to get a short circuit somewhere in this loop and that's going to stop you uh, dead in your tracks. And the same thing happens with an all-live turnout because both sides are powered all the time. At any rate, you're still going to end up with a short circuit here. And even if you only put one set of gaps in here, you're still going to get a short circuit when your wheels cross the gaps uh, at this location. So you really need two sets of gaps uh, to isolate these particular types of, of situations. Before we go on, I want to point out that the illustrations I'm showing you are from my book, uh, Wiring Your Model Railroad, published by uh, uh, Kalmbach Publications. So uh, that's available at their bookstore, uh, uh, at the Kalmbach website. You can find it at uh, Amazon.com. And basically, it covers a lot of these uh, topics that uh, I'm constantly showing you how to deal with. So uh, what I want to show you here then is how do you go about dealing with that reverse loop situation that creates the short? Well, as I just suggested, you need to have gaps isolating your reverse loop. And then, at some point, you need to have a way to change the polarity of the tracks uh, and the track power within this reverse loop. Now, one of the, with, with DC, that means you have to come into the loop, stop your locomotive, change the polarity, change the direction of travel, and then you can proceed. With DCC, it's so much simpler because you can change the polarity while the locomotive is moving. And it doesn't care because the decoder itself in the locomotive controls direction of travel. So it just, you know, takes that DCC power, rectifies it, and feeds it to the, uh, to the motor in the locomotive with the correct polarity for the direction that you want it to go in. So all you have to do is isolate the reverse loop uh, by cutting gaps in the rails on both legs of the loop. And then this whole section will be isolated. And then you can use uh, a set of switches like this to control the polarity of the loop. And as I'm going to show you, there are a lot of different companies that make automatic circuits that will do this for you. So you don't have to be throwing switches like this or depending on auxiliary context to do it for you. So let's move on. Okay, what I want to do now is focus down here on what's uh, down below my waist level, and that is the setup for 
this automated reverse loop. And I did it uh, this way. I've got it set up here on a couple of saw horses for demonstration purposes because once this is installed, it's going to be hidden in the bowels of my model railroad. And, you know, to get to it, I'm going to have to get on a crawler to get down in there. So it's something that uh, I have to show you here in the open area of the model railroad uh, area of the model railroad itself, uh, just to be able to, to demonstrate how it works. And as a result, all I have is the entrance and exit from the reverse loop itself. The actual re reverse loop is going to be six feet in diameter. So there's no way it's going to fit in this room easily and uh, be maneuverable. And I mean, it's going to have to be built in place in anyway. So let's go ahead and zoom down here on the, uh, on the uh, display area that I've set up. And we'll take a look at how I went about creating this automated reverse loop and give you some tips on how you can use it on your model railroad. So let's get started with that. Now what I have here then is the entrance to the automated reverse loop. So a locomotive coming from my left, your right, will enter the uh, turnout here and it will either go straight or it will take the diverging leg and go through the reverse loop and then return this way or it will go this way and return through here. Now I did not worry about trying to set this up with a directional approach because that gets very, very complicated very quickly. And for a simple reverse loop where all you're doing is turning trains, it doesn't really matter whether or not it goes this way or it goes that way. The intent is to get the daggone thing turned around. Okay, let's run through the actual setup before I give you a demonstration. Now, as I said, this is one of those uh, DCC Concepts Cobalt IP Digital Switch Machines with the built-in capability to do this kind of automatic uh, switching controlled by a detector. And this can be a detector like the ones I'm going to show you. It can be a photo uh, optical detector. It can be something like these little guys here. These are magnetic detectors. You can install these between your, uh, between your ties or your sleepers. And if you have a small magnet attached to the bottom of your locomotive, then these will detect when that locomotive crosses uh, this detector itself, and it can control things. Uh, of course, the optical versions uh, break a, uh, a, a light path and create a uh, signal, whereas the ones that I'm going to show you look for the occupancy using uh, current detection. So this is my uh, switch machine or uh, switch motor, and I've just connected it. I've got it uh, set in place using one of those little uh, adhesive uh, uh, patches that come with these, and that's holding it in place very firmly. And I did that because it's easier to me to get to it, do the wiring and do the maintenance than if it was installed underneath of the layout. And then I just made a bend here in the uh, control arm and ran it over to my uh, to my throw rod in the turnout. So that's very straightforward, easy easy thing to set up, and it's a lot easier than actually trying to install it from underneath of the layout. Okay, so we've got the wiring here. I have my DCC power bus, just like I showed you in previous videos, uh, uh, installed here on the layout. And I've connected a red and a green wire to the power bus and brought it up here uh, to provide power and control for this particular uh, switch machine. Okay, Then uh, those are connected to the power bus using suitcase connectors, as I've shown you in the past. Then I have a a third wire here, this yellow wire, that goes to the frog itself. And it's connected to the frog uh, using a small screw that, uh, these, these are Atlas turnouts, and they have uh, small screw holes in the frog casting for attaching a, a wire uh, to control the polarity and to power this frog. So that's the way it works here. So you've got power in here, and depending on the circuit, this will receive the correct polarity. Now, as the locomotive then passes on through this leg of the turnout, the uh, diverging leg, uh, I have, let me turn here a little bit more, I have two detectors here. These are block occupancy detectors. And they use something called a current sensing transformer. So that's this thing that looks like a headstone on a grave. 
And so I've got a red and a green wire coming up from the DCC power bus below the layout here. And one wire goes to an isolated piece of rail on this diverging leg uh, of the reverse loop. And the green one goes across to an isolated piece of track on this side of the, lay of the, uh, of the reverse loop. Now, the way these work is, when a, when a locomotive, when any kind of electrical load, be it uh, the motor of a locomotive, the lights of, the lo of a locomotive, the lights in a passenger car or a caboose, it could be a resistive wheel set on, a, on cars. But anything that conducts electricity will cause electrons to flow through this wire to get to this rail and to the locomotive or the load. And as they flow through this piece of wire, it goes through the middle of this current sensing transformer. And that induces a current in the circuit here. And then there's two wires on this that go to the switch machine here. And so when a locomotive or a load of any kind is in this part of the uh, circuit, it will send a signal for the switch machine to activate and set the route this way. Now, the other one with the green wire on it goes to this isolated rail on this leg. So if a train is coming this way and hits this rail, then electrons are going to flow through this wire, through the sensor, and send a signal through these two wires telling it to throw the other way. So that's as simple as it can get. Now, getting this set up the first time might involve flipping the, uh, the, the wires here as they go into the digital switch machine. But once you've got it set up one time and got it working right, it's going to work the same time every time without any problems whatsoever. So then, a locomotive coming either through this way or through this way is going to turn these detectors on. And the way you can tell that is there's a little LED on the board and it lights up when there is a load in that detection section. Now, for this section, you only have to make two cuts, one here and one here at each end of this detection rail. And over here, it's right here. Now, I made this a foot long, and that gives me about 14 inches of travel. As soon as the locomotive hits this point, the switch should start to change and the polarity should start to change here. So, that gives me about 14 inches of travel before the, a, a locomotive and a train coming this way is going to hit that frog and create a short circuit. So, you want to make sure that your trains are going through here at a reasonable rate of speed, not flying at the top of the throttle. And that's reasonable because the last thing you want to do is have trains derail underneath of the layout somewhere uh, where you have to use a crawler to get to them. The other thing, it works the same way on this side. I've got a train coming through here and there's about 13 inches on this side before that locomotive is going to get to this frog. And so we're, we're isolated from that and we're not going to have a short as long as you don't run through here so fast that you get there before the turnout switch machine has finished changing the position of the points and corrected the polarity. So that's how that works. It's very straightforward and I'll show you that in a minute. Now, there are a couple of things I'll point out about this. Now, in the instructions, it says to pass this loop of wire through the current sensing transformer one time. On the current sensing transformer itself, it says two times, but this works very well with just one time. So I'm assuming that they made a change at some point, but these transformers come with, the, with it saying two times, so don't be fooled by that. The other thing I found that in the instructions, it indicates that these should work and send a low-level logic uh, signal to your switch machine simply by wiring these, uh, by passing these wires through here. I could never get it to work that way. I finally added a 12 volt power supply connection here. And as soon as I added the 12 volt power supply, everything worked fine. So I think that uh, they do need to update that or I need to find out something from 
DCC concepts about why it didn't work without the 12 volt power. Um, once you add 12 volt power to this, you can also use this output to control things like motors and anything else that has a higher voltage requirement. So it could be used with signals, it could be used with lights, animation, you name it, you could control it uh, using this uh, detector. Okay, let's go on and I'll show you how the auto-reversing component works. Now, there's several different ways you can go about doing this. In this case, I used a dual frog juicer. However, just about all of the companies that make DCC products now make auto-reversers. So, NCE just came out with one last fall sometime. Uh, Digitrax makes their AR1. Uh, the uh, DCC Specialties makes the PSX AR. And the folks at DCC Concepts makes this Cobalt Rex. And you can run your wires from your de uh, detectors in here as well. And it can control, actually, control your turnout and your uh, polarity of your frog and your uh, uh, reverse loop polarity. But there are a couple of questions I had about this, so I did not use it uh, for this installation. So as soon as I can get into contact with their technical people and get some answers uh, to my questions, I'll come back and give you an update on how to use this. Because, you know, you could do uh, everything with this one guy here. And you could also use this to control a tortoise switch machine or one of the older uh, uh, cobalt uh, analog type switch machines. But for this, as I said, I used a, a dual frog juicer. And a dual frog juicer is just like a mono frog juicer, except it has two circuits built in. And you can also get a hex frog juicer. The neat thing about the dual frog juicer is it has a pair of outputs right here with a jumper. And if you put that jumper across two pins, it will turn this into an auto reverser. And that's what I've done. So I've got basically, I've got power coming up here from my DCC power bus. And this is just the end of the power bus wire itself. And it goes into the circuit here. And then I have the red wires going out to the red rail and the green wires going out to my green rails. So that if there is at any time uh, or at any point, such as I put two gaps right here, a gap here and a gap here, and I've got a similar setup on the other side. So that when a locomotive hits the gap here, if there is a polarity mismatch, this circuit will automatically correct it. And it's, it's near instantaneous. It's very, very fast. Um, you also have the option of setting this up for 2 amp or 4 amp operation. So if you, uh, I'm using this with a uh, Digitrax uh, Zephyr uh, setup, so it's less than 5 amps. And they say if your DCC booster is less than 5 amps, to go ahead and use the 2 amp setting. Uh, at a higher amperage, you can use the 4 amp setting, which comes in handy if you're using, you know, 3 or 4 unit uh, lash ups uh, to power your trains. So I've got this uh, set for the 2 amp setting, and um, it's working fine as far as I can tell so far. Basically then, I've gone through how you set this up and how it works, so let's go ahead with a demonstration. Okay, let me show you how this works with an actual demonstration. So I've got two locomotives set up, one on each leg of the return loop. Now, right now the turnout is set to go straight. So I'm going to go ahead and run this locomotive through the curve and see if it's going to uh, work correctly. So let's get it started. Okay, now here's my polarity gap. We had a change here because I can see the two LEDs on this circuit board changed. This LED came on as soon as it hit the detection gap and the turnout has changed positions. So it's going to go on through. Now let's reverse it and bring it back through. And you'll see that even though it's going to activate this detector, the red came on, it's not going to change the turnout because it's already set for that direction. Okay, now let's see what happens when the other locomotive crosses the gap here. Those changed. This is green now, it was red. 
it's now entered the detection block and the turnout has set for the correct route. So it can go right on through the loop. And again, going backwards, it doesn't change it because it's set for the correct route. And just to give you a, an idea that this is really working uh, as it would in a reverse loop, you can see back here, I have a set of alligator clip uh, test leads connecting the two loops together, or the two sections together, just as they would if track went all the way around. So this shows that it's actually working as a reverse loop, really would. The polarity is being handled by the dual frog juicer, and the detectors are detecting the presence of the locomotives and changing the position of the turnout and the frog polarity just as I want it. And that means that I don't have to touch anything. I don't have to push any buttons. I don't have to do anything except run locomotives and trains through the reverse loop and it will automatically take care of everything for me. And that is really what I wanted because again, with this buried down in the bowels of the layout, I'm not going to be able to see what's going on and keep track of when I need to push a push button to control polarity or to control uh, a turnout or anything of that nature. It's going to be handled automatically. And there are a lot of different uh, applications for this other than a typical reverse loop. You can have reverse loops that are built in to layouts uh, by design and you can have them that are that actually are built in if you inadvertently connect between two tracks of opposite polarity. And in that case, you can use this type of setup to correct the polarity uh, mismatches for you. So, that's how it works. It's accomplished everything I wanted and it only took me two days to get it set up to this point. Now it's gonna take a little while longer to install this underneath of the layout and finish building that entire six foot uh, return loop uh, on this end of the layout. But that's it for now. I, you know, I'm happy with this. Please just punch that I know I can, I can have the automated reverse loop taken care of. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope that gives you a better idea of how you can go about using uh, block occupancy detectors coupled with various switch machines and, and other electronic components to create automated features on your model railroad. Because, you know, what I showed you today just is the tip of the iceberg as far as the things that you can use all of this type of equipment for. So, have a great weekend, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.